Well, good evening everybody. Um, we are going to be live on Facebook for our midweek Bible study. Hope you can hear and see us clearly. If you can hear us and see us, um, uh, please leave us a little like or a message or um, just a, a wave or something like that so we know that you, you are able to, to hear what we're saying. This is our Bible study for Greater Grace Church of Chester and Hellsby Port. Uh, and uh, you can also find us as well if you found us for the first time. We are at ggchurch.co.uk and also on YouTube at uh, Greater Grace Evangelical Church. Uh, now we start off this evening um, with some very sad news actually. For, sad for us, but not for her because uh, our. Dear sister uh, Janice Trotter uh, has been in our church for many years now actually. Uh, she uh, was to have heart surgery uh, this morning. Uh, sadly she didn't recover from the surgery and she has gone home to be with her Lord. So um, we take that as a comfort that she knows exactly uh, we know exactly where she is because uh, she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as her saviour and she has that assurance uh, of your of God's faithfulness and uh, we know where she will be so uh, we want to uh, be thinking of uh, Kyle and Tanya and Ewan, Charmaine and Alan uh, Tanya, Darlene, Sean, James, the different ones family members, friends uh, Anne is here, and Anne Sales is with us here tonight, and uh, as is Jackie, and uh, also Nigel, we should actually show uh, our front room, we actually have a, a, a group of people here tonight, which is, uh, <laughs> my wife is over there as well, <laughs> yeah, it's my wife's feet, um, so, <laughs> but, um, and we have our Christmas decorations up as well, so, um, Greetings uh, to everyone. Uh, well, we also really want to uh, take this time to pray for the family uh, at this time as well. And uh, yeah, we we don't know many details yet, but uh, uh, we do know that we will miss her very much. She was a, a great friend and a, uh, an amazing woman of God, and a great servant of the Lord, and very much part of things in our church. So. Uh, the news is, is very recent um, but yeah let's pray uh, let's give this time to the Lord and, uh, and, we'll, uh, and we'll see what God does tonight Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we worship you tonight we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness we thank you Lord that you are in every situation Lord you are in our hurts and our wounds our sadness and our sorrows you bore our griefs, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are in our joy, our rejoicing. You are in every part of our, our life. Thank you, Lord, that you bring different seasons uh, through our lives. And uh, Lord, we just uh, we are humbled at your power, your majesty, your might your sovereignty over our lives, Lord. We went to just think of our, our sister our Janice, who we've been praying for for many weeks now. Uh, we are saddened by her passing, but Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we know where she is. We know her joy in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the scripture that tells us absent from the body present with the Lord thank you Lord for your scripture that tells us that there is rewards well done good and faithful servant thank you Lord we, uh, we really want to lift up each member of the family we think particularly of Kyle uh, this evening Lord, for Tanya and for you and also Lord just real deep comfort for Charmaine as well, Lord, for our brothers as well. 
for Alan and the family as well. Darlene and Sean and, and Tanya as well. And just each one for Anne here as well, for James, for different friends, as well those that were really close as well. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just ask for your mercy now, Lord. Your comfort, your healing and your life, Lord. None of us know what the future holds. None of us have any guarantees on that. But we know that you are a faithful God. You are a loving Father. And you are a perfect Saviour. And Lord, we just commit each one into your hands. Into your loving care tonight, Lord. <coughs> Guide us and strengthen us, fill us with your spirit tonight, Lord, we pray. And just touch hearts, Lord. Tonight we, we ask, uh, show us your heart as we open your word together. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, uh, uh, we are uh, blessed to be together tonight. I have a few people here. We were hoping it would be a joyful occasion. Uh, as I say, we are somewhat subdued by uh, the news that we've heard, but uh, but we we will continue with God's word. Uh, today is a, a, a day of prayer as well in our ministry worldwide, and we just think of many of the missionaries around the world, our friends, and we also think of many people who are praying for us and for our church here. And we are grateful for that as well. Now we're going to read in a minute from uh, Genesis chapter 8. And we'll just read a few verses tonight. We won't be maybe this long. But, uh, verse 18 of Genesis 8. It says, <coughs> And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his son's wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagine of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease Let's pray, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the words that we've uh, just read now. Thank you for your love for us, for your gentleness, your tender care, your faithfulness. And, Lord, we just pray that you touch hearts tonight. Minister your love, minister your life to us now, we pray. fill us, anoint us, Lord, we need your Holy Spirit more than ever before, we are nothing in ourselves, and we need your illumination, your direction, your word, your truth, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Wow. These few verses 
that we read tonight, they reveal a lot about the nature of man. They reveal a lot about the nature of nature. And they reveal a lot about the nature of God. You've got the God of nature and the, na and the nature of God, I think, summed up in these few thoughts after the ark after God brings the people safely to Mount Ararat when the ark after the flood has taken its course and the ark is opened now you might say well it wasn't it very harsh judgment wasn't it very severe of God to judge the world in that way the whole of humanity and not just humanity the whole of every living creature wiped out in the flood but the interesting thing is in the scripture what we see is any time that God judges any time that God is harsh and uh, has to implement judgment there's also blessing as well there is also gentleness as well. There is blessing added to it because that is God's nature. Sometimes in this life we have to be harsh, we have to be uh, a little bit brutal, a little bit uh, firm for the sake of truth, for the sake of, uh, of righteousness but God's nature is always as a God of mercy a God of tender care and a God of love also and we see that manifested here in the story of the flood and the story after the flood often we see um, situations where God judges his people but he often gives them something else as well times he disciplined them when they were in the wilderness times when he disciplined them when they he, they were taken into captivity even the God when they were put out of the garden of Eden God God gave clothes <laughs> God gave uh, gave them uh, coverings of skin uh, you when after this they're also told that they're uh, after the flood they're also told that they can now eat the animals that they can be meat for them was another gift another blessing that he gave to mankind after uh, after the judgment sometimes we see this with children as well that we are forced to discipline them over something and they don't like the discipline but often they can be a sweet time when you can talk to them and uh, reassure them of your 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 love and your care and maybe sometimes explain why what they did was wrong and sometimes there is a greater sweetness there I've heard a lot of people say that uh, in their in their their family life with their children that you know sometimes the the tenderest moments are after maybe they've had to discipline and we know this ourselves sometimes when when God has has broken us we were talking about brokenness I think last week uh, and God has allowed a situation whereby we've become broken there is a tenderness in there there's a nearness to the Lord there's a sweetness that can come in uh, that we've never felt before sometimes we have to rely on the Lord more than we ever did Noah does something quite special as well he built an altar to the Lord now imagine this he, he's got off this boat he's been on this boat how many months I know people say well 40 days and 40 nights well that was the first part that was actually the the season that the flood was starting but there's months if you read it that's actually 
you know, it goes on for a very long time. And they they eventually come out of the, the ark. And what do they do? What, what would be your first reaction when you get off a boat like that? You know, what was to be the first thing that you did? You know, oh, you know, oh, they go. Uh, run free and uh, I've been cooped up all this time. I want to go and run. Uh, you know, and run up a mountain or climb or you know, want to you know, get uh, get some exercise. Want to do something. Want to celebrate. Uh, want to have a nice meal or something like that. No, his first reaction is to build an altar to God. Wow. An altar to the Lord and to sacrifice some of the clean animals. One in seven, there were seven of each clean animal and seven of each clean bird, it tells us, uh, that, that was taken into the ark. Now imagine this, one in seven of those animals that existed at the time were sacrificed to the Lord on that day that they came out of the ark. Conservationists today would do their nuts. They would go crazy at the thought that, you know, like, well, we have only... We have only seven of this animal left alive on the planet. And you're going to take one and sacrifice it. It's like, wow, that's crazy. But you know what? He did it as an act of gratitude to the Lord. Saying the thank you to the God for preservation. Thank you for preserving life. He did it as an act of obedience to God as well to say Lord I have trusted you in all of these things and I trust you again but he also did it, it did as an act of confidence in God's character and God's nature to say Lord you brought us through this we've trusted you we love you, we, we continue to trust you. And even though it seems like uh, almost a, 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 a strange thing to do, a crazy thing to do, I'm going to give you a sacrifice. I'm going to give you some of the best that we have. I don't have, there's not much left to give you. Much has been destroyed. But what I have left, I'm going to give you some of that as a sacrifice as a covenant between me and you to say actually this is how much I trust you I trust that you will give other animals again I trust that you will repopulate the world with animals I trust that you will provide for me and my family and let's face it Noah had trusted God with his life with his family and with the welfare of the planet so now to trust him with the animals as well it's another it's a it's a similar step and yeah we see also something there that as we said this heart when God is severe and judging he also shows his tender side. He shows his gentler side. The Lord smelled a very sweet savour. But also the sweet savour he, he perceived, I think, was, was also the fact that he saw the heart of sacrifice there too. He saw that a human someone who was made in his image Noah a man an ordinary man who God had chosen he had a, a heart to sacrifice a heart to give something back because that was in mankind it was a reflection of God's nature that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to become our sacrifice he was going to lay down his life for mankind and the heart of God was to give of his best for mankind 
he was going to give the, the very best that he could give. And in a, in a funny sort of way, God realized that, hey, yes, this heart of sacrifice, this heart to lay down, this heart of gratitude and this heart of fellowship, it's in man as well. It can be in man as well as a reflection of God's nature. Someone who spent a lot of time, as Noah had, with the Lord, they get that heart that God had for his creation and they reflect it back to the Lord and we're going to give something we're going to give back a blessing and it's interesting because God gave them a blessing again a promise Now in the next chapter you have the promise of the rainbow that is given as well. And people often think that, that is that is the, the covenant that God made was the rainbow. And it's one of the signs that yes, that God gave that when the clouds appear, God said, I will not flood the world again. And the reason you will know that I won't flood the, the world again is you will see that ray of light. Um, the combination of light and water together diffused as a rainbow and I'll put that there as a symbol of hope and as a symbol of God's faithfulness and his covenant and his gentleness but also here you have another blessing And it's this, <clears throat> while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Now, You might say, well, that doesn't sound like much of a blessing. But actually, the seasons that God has given us, they are a great blessing to us. They are a deep blessing. The seasons of the year. Sometimes... Uh, Maybe we're tempted to think, oh, I wish it could be nice summer weather all the year round. Oh, it would never be cold. And, and uh, you know, and there are people who look for that. It will move to various parts of the world to try and find that. But actually, the countries that have it hot all the time, they aren't always good places to live. Because <coughs> with the heat often comes tropical storms. Uh, with the heat often comes shortages of water and there are and uh, there are there are not the not always the easiest places to live in fact we have the these ideas of oh you know it uh, tropics are a great place but you look at the tropic of cancer the tropic of capricorn these lines that are drawn on the map but actually most of those lines on the map they go through deserts almost every bit of land where these, these lines touch across the earth, that's where the major deserts of the world are. And you think, well, you know, like we have this idea, oh, wouldn't it be great if it was summer all the time? No. God gave the seasons for a reason. He gave the seasons for our blessing. And actually, we're those of us who are blessed to live in a temperate part of the world, we are blessed with uh, with a mixture of weather. Sometimes we complain about it. We like we like to complain about the weather in this country, particularly. You know, it's a national obsession and a national pastime. But it's like yes, but actually, in many ways, you think of it. The seasons are a real blessing. The blessings of God provision. The blessings of variety. Uh, 
the blessings of routine. I can't remember who it was, but I remember I think there was a missionary from Sweden who went to Africa. I don't know where it was, Congo or somewhere like that. Uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. But one of the things that fascinated the inhabitants more than anything was to hear about Sweden itself because this idea that there was a country where it wasn't always light at six o'clock and dark at six o'clock where it's like what you have you have long evenings in the summer and short daytime in the in the wind in the winter you have snow in uh, all of these things that they, they, they often the, the people uh, in, in the uh, in the uh, rainforest of Africa were were amazed, uh, fascinated with this. In the same way that maybe if you went to Sweden and told people about the tropical rainforest, they'd be just as equally fascinated about how that wonderful that was. But um, we we like to hear about something that is different. But actually, God has given us great variety in our planet. And great variety in the seasons. Each season has its joys, its gifts, its delight. Cold and heat, summer and winter, seed time and harvest. We see the passings of the seasons, and uh, we are blessed right, by it, by the whether it's enjoying the summer evenings or whether it's being cosy by the fire in winter uh, whether it's uh, seeing the snow covering the landscape whether it's uh, enjoying the autumn leaves or the spring flowers or the new animals that are born in the springtime uh, watching the lambs or enjoying the, the beach in summer Every season has its blessings. Every season has its its differences. Maybe at the moment we're very conscious of the seasons. As I said, we put up our Christmas tree. You can probably see it's the, a branch or two there uh, poking beside me. Uh, but yeah, it's an it's a different season. A change of the season. But each season comes around. We we see its beauty, its its joys. God also gave another thing with that, and that is routine, regularity that there is a rhythm to our life. Each one of us is born, we have a childhood, and we grow, and we mature, and we go through the different seasons of life. Sometimes our, our teenage years can be challenging, and sometimes our 20, early 20s can be. Some people have different seasons where where, where they're going through a lot of uh, decisions as to who they are and finding their feet and uh, giving, them, giving themselves a, a reason to live and uh, what are their value systems, all of these things. We spend a lifetime finding these things out. And we, we grow, we mature, we change. Some people are blessed to receive old age. Not everybody sadly makes that. Uh, but there again, there are different seasons of life. Started a new job a few months ago, and within a, 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 a little while, you start to get into a new routine. But that routine is what sort of gives rhythm to life, isn't it? Uh, you start to realise, oh, we need to have 
these meetings on this day at work. We need this. This has to be done by this time. This job has to be done on, at this season. Um, in my lunch hour on a Monday, I will go, go and spend it here. On a Tuesday, I might go somewhere else. Uh, we have this rhythm, this this routine that we get into. Uh, it's Sunday. I want to be in church. Uh, it's uh, it's Wednesday night. Uh, I'm going to watch something online. Uh, different seasons of the week, day and night. Our routine, our daily routine. It's a God-given gift and it's a blessing because that regularity, that rhythm is a blessing to us it gives us a degree of comfort and to give a degree of familiarity as well you know one of the most disturbing things i think about the last year and a half that we've been going through this pandemic and maybe one of the things that a lot of people found difficult was the lack of that routine was the complete change in these things that rather than people have the re the regular rhythm of life the regular events of the year um, oh it's summer so we'll go on holiday it's Christmas we'll be with our family these things got interrupted and changed and we're out of the, out of the ordinary and I think many people found that difficult to cope with uh, that uh, interruption of things because God has given us that sense of, of life uh, and rhythm and routine for a reason he instituted the seventh day to be a day of rest he instituted feasts for his people that they would have uh, the feast of the tabernacles, the feast of the trumpets, uh, the uh, day of atonement, and the different feasts that he uh, had uh, had had, had uh, put down for his nation, for his people to observe. Why that there would be a time of the year to think about these things. Our friends in America have just had Thanksgiving last week, and that was a, that was a that's a a season for them to reflect and be thankful. And in, each nation has its different traditions. In, in England, we have bonfire night, and again, it's it's one of those things that not every country has. Uh, uh, it's interesting to go uh, if you go and live in another country to find out its traditions and its its days it what it values and what it finds special but these things come round with a regularity that is comforting to people and it points to the fact that our lives are in God's hands we have a, a God who created a world of order. We have a God who has a plan. Uh, we sometimes, we probably will be singing uh, in a few weeks' time some of the carols. Uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it came upon a midnight clear. It says, and with the ever circling years comes round the age of gold. And it's true that they, the years are ever circling and sometimes we think that they are circling faster and faster but uh, you know again I think that might be just a, a perception thing but uh, yeah we are entering this season of Advent the Christmas season and it's special because it's different from other seasons it's set apart the focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ and on his birth. It's special also because it's comforting as well. 
it's a break from our regular routine of work and all of the other things that we do all year, all year round but it also has its own routine its own uh, set of circumstances and in the same way that it's co when it is comforting to see an old friend I was thinking about that when we when we visit a, a, a convention or a conference and uh, what is one of the best parts of this yes it's great to hear God's word yes it's great to travel see places but you know one of the best parts is to see friends again to have fellowship with people that we've known for years uh, people who love us and, and people whom we love and that comfort of an old friend someone who's dependable is very special and we don't underestimate it and the Christmas story itself is a bit like an old friend as we decorated our Christmas tree yesterday we, uh, it made me realize that which we have uh, all of these decorations that go back years as I turn and look at it I see that on there there are certain decorations that I remember from when I was a child putting on my parents Christmas tree and we have them now on our Christmas tree here and in a funny sort of way when we open the, the, the box of the decorations you think ah I haven't seen this for a year or, or, for, uh, or for 11 months shall we say maybe and it's like, but it, it's that sort of, ah, oh, that recognition, that memory. Some of the, these ones are ones that my wife and I have bought over the years as we've lived together. And sometimes they have key memories attached to them of when and where we bought them. And uh, there's that, uh, there's that regularity, that, that remembrance, that familiarity that we see there. And we come to the story of Christmas and then we see Mary, Joseph, shepherds, angels, wise men, Herod. Even Herod is sort of comforting in a way because, oh, there's the regularity of the story. There's that, uh, there's that, uh, there's that comfort of, oh, yes, we know this is part of it. This is like part of our family. Often we spend uh, Christmas with those that we love, those that we care for. And there's that regularity there. There's a comfort that comes from it. And it can be very hard when we lose people who we love and uh, who have been a comfort to us for years. But you know what? Our, our God is there with his gentleness, with his sweetness as a comfort to us as a as an old friend as a friend who will never leave us a friend who will never forsake us someone who will always be there each year, each season each season is different Matthew chapter 1 it says it in verse 22 now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us and this is the thing we have a God who is our saviour 
we have a God who is God with us Emmanuel an old friend a friend who is closer than a brother a strong deliverer the one who will never leave us the one who never forsakes us God with us fulfillment of prophecy his name would be called Emmanuel when was his name called Emmanuel well really we only see that in this verse here in this Matthew chapter 1 it was foretold that that would happen it was foretold by Isaiah way back in Isaiah chapter 7 a virgin shall be with child and shall give birth and they shall call his name Emmanuel it happened because God was faithful and his faithfulness doesn't depart and it is the God that we enjoy this is the God who is real, real to us now this is the God who doesn't depart from us. As Noah came out of the ark and trusted God for a world that was completely different from the one that he'd known before. I actually, I believe that the world was completely topographically different as well. Um, in that the flood had so altered things many of the continents that we now know where they, where they are they may well not have been in that position prior to the flood mountain ranges and rivers uh, you know everything was altered the whole surface of the earth was altered Noah came out into a world that he didn't recognize and that was going to be very different everything that had gone before was no longer there except for his family and the animals that he brought with him but he knew that God was with him the sweet smelling savour of the sacrifice that was a testimony to Noah's relationship with the Lord that he knew that God was there for him as we come to another Christmas, as we come towards that season, there are many things that maybe we will find comforting. There are many memories that come back. But the most important of all is that we have God with us, our Saviour, our hope our life, whatever things may change, whatever things may be different. Our God is faithful. He's given us that comfort of another Christmas. He's given us that, that comfort of fellowship, of life together. He's given us the comfort of a Saviour who loves us and gave his life for us and will never leave us let's pray Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord Lord we're very conscious of uh, so many who have lost loved ones this, re this season we think of Janice and the family and her family today we think of Anne particularly Lord we think of Nigel who's here as well his brother's family. We think of uh, Martina and Romanka as well. And Kvieta's family. We think of all those that love Margaret as well. Many that we, we think of Alex and Miriam down in the London church. Lord, we see so many who have lost people this last season. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can never lose our God. We can never lose our Saviour. 
but you are there as a comfort to us for all time. Thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight. We, we thank you that that heart that you put into Noah, that heart of sacrifice, was your heart because you were to give everything for us. We thank you, Lord, that the Christmas story reminds us of you giving your son to the earth. Thank you, Lord, that you gave your best for us. And you always give your best for us. Fill us with your life tonight, Lord, we pray. Comfort those that need your special comfort tonight, we pray. Strengthen, Lord, heal and renew this season, we pray. And Lord, we ask if there's anyone out there who's never fully trusted you as Saviour, who doesn't know the, the God of all comfort, who doesn't know the power of being saved by the living God. Lord, we just ask that this would be the time when they say, Lord, I need a Saviour. I need someone to comfort me. I need someone bigger than me, stronger than me more able than me, more worthy than me. I'm a failure, I'm a sinner. But I know that you have paid the price for me. I know that you have taken the blame. And I know that you are the one who is able to make all things new. I love you, Lord. I trust you. And I want you to be in my life. Fill me with your spirit now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God willing, we can all be together on Sunday. We uh, invite you to join with us in Bankford. Um, we also would like to mention our, our celebration for Christmas that we're having on the 19th uh, and we will eat together we will go down to the village green and, and sing together uh, and uh, God willing we will also have uh, performances uh, small drama so please join with us then that's in, in Backford on uh, Sunday the 19th of December uh, Take care and God bless and see you all soon. Bye for now.